Welcome to Electronics Explained, where we talk about electronics for everyone. Today we are going to talk about the resistor. It is one of the most common and simplest electronic components out there. So common that you are able to find it in almost every single electronic device ever made. The main purpose of a resistor is limiting the current flow through an electrical circuit. It does this by eating the electrical energy and converting it into heat. Ohm's law states that the resistance of an electrical circuit is the end result of dividing the voltage by the current. The letter of the resistance is an R and its value is in ohms. The resistor you see on screen right now is a fixed carbon film resistor. With fixed we mean that it has a fixed value. So how do we determine the value of a resistor? There are actually multiple ways to determine the value of this carbon film resistor. First up is by its color code. We can use this simple chart to find out what the value is of this particular resistor. All you have to do now is follow the chart. Yellow is 4, violet is 7, here is where it gets a bit tricky. Since this is a 4 band resistor, we skip the third band, meaning that the orange band is the multiplier, making the resistor 47,000 ohms or 47k ohms. There is one more band on the resistor, the tolerance band. In this case it's gold, so the tolerance of the resistor is 5%. Really quick here, there are also 6 band resistors out there. The 6th band is the temperature coefficient. A resistor's value can slightly change with temperature, and you can use this 6 band to calculate that difference. Since the change is so minor, we will ignore that 6 band for the purpose of simplicity. Now, the second method involves using a multimeter, and the multimeter is this little device over here. All you have to do is hook up the resistor to these test leads. It doesn't matter which side goes on which since it doesn't have a polarity. There you go, put that down. Now, over on the multimeter side, you must plug in the red plug into the uh, volt ohm socket, and the black plug goes into your common or your ground. Now, all you have to do is switch your multimeter over to the ohm function. Wait for it to boot up on mine. And there we go. That's our resistance. That's how simple it is. 4.7k ohms. One thing I forgot to mention is that you have to turn the circuit off before measuring because you can't measure a resistance while there is still a current going through it. Because that's just the way the multimeter works. But all in all, that's it. You're done. The third and as far as I know, last common method is by using a current clamp meter, the multimeter and Ohm's law, which I mentioned earlier. This method is used when you cannot turn off the device you are trying to measure, and the resistor has no value or color code on it. Keep in mind that a clamp meter isn't accurate, and it should only be used for big currents. Smaller ones will be as good as unnoticed by these current meters. We use the clamp meter for measuring the current without breaking the circuit, so it's very safe. Just hang it around a single wire that the resistor is directly connected to. Make sure you select the right form of current, AC or DC. Next, we use a multimeter in its voltage measurement feature to measure the voltage over the resistor. Lastly, use Ohm's law to calculate the resistor's value. So, we have talked about how to measure a resistor. But how do we find out what exact resistor we want to use for our own circuits? Again, we can use Ohm's law for that. The easiest way to show you is by taking a 9 volt battery and the LED running on 2.5 volts. If we were to connect the LED without a resistor, you will burn out the LED as it cannot sustain that 9 volt. We know that these small LEDs work on around 20 milliamps. In order to use Ohm's law to calculate the resistor to set that voltage to 2.5 volts, we need to subtract that 2.5 volt from that 9 volt source, resulting in an answer of 6.5 volt. All that is left for us to do is divide the 6.5 volt by the 20 milliamps, or 0.02 amps, and you get a resistor with a value of 325 ohms. This isn't really a standard value, so in this case the resistor you'll use is 330 ohms. But wait. Now you only know one half of what you need to know. Earlier on I talked about how a resistor generates heat. The more the resistor holds back, 
the more energy gets turned into heat. Not only does a resistor have an ohm value, it also has a maximum watts value, the so-called power rating. This energy can be calculated by doing the voltage times the current. In this case, 6.5 volt times 0.02 amps will give you 0.13 watts. So how do we find out the maximum watts rating for our resistors? For the carbon film resistors I showed you earlier, this gets a bit complicated. When you buy them, you can see the power rating on the side or wherever you get them from. But if you take them out of an old bag or something, you have to go by physical size. Lucky for you guys, I found this little chart which can help you with this. Keep in mind there are a lot of different types of resistors and there are also bigger resistors that have the power rating written on them, together with its own value. As a rule of thumb, I stay away from anything lower than one foot of a watt and usually pick a resistor with about double or in some cases triple the rating that one is needed. So I picked a one foot of a watt resistor which can handle 0.25 watts. There are a couple of tricks that I'd like to share with you. In series, two resistors add up, meaning that if I put a 200 ohm and 100 ohm resistor in series, I will have a total resistance of 300 ohms. In parallel, however, we have a formula that I will put on screen now. What it all boils down to is that if I put two 600 ohms, one foot of a watt resistor into parallel, I will end up with a 300 ohm, one half of a watt resistor. This is very handy for if you don't have those large resistors at hand. So far we have only talked about fixed resistors, but there are many more resistor types. Another very common one is the potentiometer. This is a variable resistor and by turning the knob or the slider in some variants, you can change the ohm value. Keep in mind there are differences in how a potentiometer behaves. For simplicity, we will only focus on the linear one, which is the most common potentiometer used for basics. These smaller potentiometers can't handle that big of a power. For dimming one LED, for example, it's fine. But if you want to dim multiple LEDs, I suggest you look into PWM regulation. But that's a story for another day. For now, let's look back at one LED. By putting this 10k ohm potentiometer, the value doesn't really matter for demonstration, into a circuit together with the 330 ohm resistor we calculated earlier, we can fade this LED. The reason why the 330 ohm resistor stays in the circuit is so that we can regulate between 0 and 2.5 volts, instead of 0 and 9 volts, so that we don't risk damaging the LED. Hook up one of the potentiometer's outer legs to the resistor, it doesn't really matter which one, and the middle leg to the LED. You can put it behind the LED if you like to, but for the sake of organization I like to always put my resistors in front of my LED. As you can see, we can fade the LED by turning the knob on the top. And that is how you fade an LED. As for other types, we have the NTC and the PTC resistors, which stand for negative temperature coefficient and positive temperature coefficient. And you guessed it, the ohm value on these change drastically depending on temperature. The last one I'd like to share with you is the LDR, or light dependent resistor. This one changes its ohm value depending on how much light shines on it. There are many more types, but I can't possibly name them all, but for basics and for now, it is fine that you know these types. I hope you learned more about this component. I know we only scratch the surface of what a resistor can do, but with these basics you can start understanding the more complicating things. Like this video if it helped you out, and if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, so you do not miss any new uploads. Well, that is all for me for today, I see you in the next one.